Hello, everybody. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book, episode 23. Over testing. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been getting lots of cool stuff ready for us today, so I have some new fun stuff. But the most important thing we're doing, which is, is the real reason we're here, is uh, Sunday Tea Book, oolong tea. We've been making our way through oolong tea. We've covered green tea. We've covered dark tea. Mm -hmm. um, we've covered how to appreciate all kinds of great things about tea. You can see all those episodes on our channel. But today is about tea going and. Uh, <laughs> I had a breath. No, no worries. Our preferred mode to do a video. The worst thing that can happen to us is to be sitting here for 10 minutes, everything ready and good. So we mm. just dropped into these seats and we just went live. So, but that works for us somehow, even though we have little fun brain farts and I forgot to turn the scene on when we went live. So the Instagram people got two intros. Right. Um, so anyway, hey everybody I, out there in YouTube land and hello all you folks in, uh, in uh, Instagram land. Yes, I just want to get the tea going. So basically, yes. uh, during today's tea book, we will be brewing some Tie Guayin Classic. And feel free... Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the leaf. Feel free to um, you shoot up uh, the teas. The yeah, let us drinking. know what you're brewing. Yeah. And um, eventually, once you get it sipping, let us know how it tastes. Good afternoon, uh, Fernanda. Yes. And uh, on, the, on the YouTube side, I'm showing you the link to this tea is down below in the website. So you can see the full description there. You can also find out where this, uh, when it was harvested, where it was brewed, and some basic brewing instructions um, there on the website. Mm -hmm. And since today we're talking about uh, Tie Guanyin Classic, we will, uh, no, Tie Guanyin in general, we will talk about mm. why is this tea classic? What are the differences compared to just Tie Guanyin or mm. Charcoal Rosa? There are lots of interesting lots things. Lots of we nuance. Talk about. Lots of nuance yes. with Tie Guanyin so for sure. So be sure to uh, shoot up your uh, questions or stuff uh, during the live. Don't be shy. And I'm just now gonna quickly show you the book we have been working on, which is uh, China Tea by my mom, Jian Li Wu. And this is a Great. I get nervous when I can't he look at her. Freaks her out. Um, me, I thought I thought Wait, I might Instagram. have said something bad or wrong Perfect. or something. No, you said Anyways, uh, so this is a great uh, book that uh, covers almost uh, all the aspects of Chinese tea and its culture from the Chinese perspective. Mm. And for those of you who are more advanced in the tea journey, it's a great tea to organize your knowledges and. Um, get us on the same page in terms of tea turns and tea names and it's a very helpful it's an excellent uh, book. foundation for our future exploration together. Yeah, that is 100% true and just to back up a little bit for anyone who's new, what the heck is Sunday Tea Book? What is even going on here? What's all this stuff in front of us? Sunday Tea Book was an idea that you guys gave us to yeah. review uh, Chinese oh, articles. Sorry. Yeah, rock and roll. Chinese article books and, um, and papers, academic papers that, uh, that are really full of great information but are really hard to find or impossible to find in the West. And uh, most of the time they're not translated, sometimes they're translated but poorly, so we review them here, clear up all the uh, confusion. That is what Sunday Tea Book is, that is what we've been doing for 23 weeks as we work our way through China Tea. Oh, I want to just uh, yeah, say yeah, that. I already sked, like uh, planted the whole book, we're going to finish this book at episode 36, it's coming up. Wow, uh, we're so we're getting the close. The tunnel, right? Wow, when we started, we, saw, like we thought, two, what have we done, look how long this done. book is. But we're really making it and it's thanks to you guys, okay, mm. for the idea, for coming out, for just enjoying it. So what I find amazing about uh, Sunday Tea Book and why I, um, why I, I, was, I was fond of the idea when it was first introduced, but ever since we've been doing it, I get more and more excited because over the five years I've been working with Jen and diving into Chinese tea. So for those of you who don't know, I started as a newbie. As a newbie, Jen is an experienced tea connoisseur. Her mother, Jen Li Wu, the author of the book we're going over today, are tea experts, tea gurus, whatever you want to call them. Um, they know about tea. They know how to get real tasty, get great tea, how to identify it, how to bust a fake. They know all of that stuff. And I've been learning like a sponge for four or five years. And when we go over this stuff together, I have a million questions, often quite annoying. And, um, but the answers to those questions unravel some of the confusion behind Chinese tea. So that's why I'm super excited about this. I think that's why you guys keep coming back. Let us know what you like about the show. Let us know what you'd like to see. 
Folks on Instagram, I have a sad message for you. Well, <laughs> if you don't have YouTube, if you have YouTube, you're gold. But we do this show on YouTube because we bring the book right up on the screen. I read it out, we go over it. I got some awesome tea trivia coming up, so you definitely want to dive over to YouTube. You do not want to miss my tea trivia. Your tea trivia, our tea trivia. It's super fun. It's super awesome. I've got another batch of questions lined up, totally relevant to today's topic. So Instagram, I'm going to say bye-bye. We'll see you on the YouTube side. Thank you for dropping in. And for all those on YouTube, brace for impact. Here comes tea trivia. (laughs) Okay, i got to first say bye-bye to Instagram. See you on the YouTube side. (laughs) Bye-bye. Share to IGTV. Oh, here Cindy is a Hamis on Tiaguan classic along with us. I saw that. That's, That's super so awesome. Cool. I want to have a little bell that. that goes off when people yes, brew with us. I'd love to be sure have to share with us your tasting notes. I really, really enjoy uh, reading people's uh, tasting notes and how they approach different teas and different mm-hmm. angles. Uh, can I drop something different? It's talking about the shampoo we have. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, what, uh, when we talk shampoo. about. Go ahead. I don't yeah. even know what's well, coming we, here. This is uh, going to be interesting. Talk about tasting notes and stuff. It's, you know, it's not about right or wrong. It's always about the people's own experience, mm. ability to taste different nuances and stuff. Uh, why I talk about shampoo is we have a shampoo conditioner, something like that, that he described as super coconut, like a typical coconut. Oh, or that something. was a really good finding. And I think for you're me, right about I, that. Never, mm. I never associated mm. that. Uh, mm. uh, conditioner with, with coconut, the coconut mm. at all like it's really interesting and mm. I know on the on the package it says coconut sand or stuff like that I just I never I don't get it and I eat coconut I don't like coconut she's not oil. a big fan she's not a big I fan. don't like coconut oil I like coconut water I also eat the fresh coconut like what I mean is I'm not those who doesn't have any experience yeah, with the you're, coconut. yeah you know coconut but somehow I just n- never thought that mm. aroma is coconut to me. Uh, what I'm saying here is like uh, even the same thing, different people could have yeah, quite different perception. Different, uh, yeah, perception yeah. Given a real coconut, we could both identify that for sure. But mm. given a single slice of the coconut's profile, which is uh, my hypothesis is that shampoo is just delivering a slice of it. And that's not the slice she associates with coconut, which I think comes back to share the tasting notes, right? Yes. Which is why we share tasting notes. because. Mm. Even though we're all drinking the same tea, it's a totally different tea for every single one of us. We each have our own perception of it. Mm -hmm. Guys, I think you know what time it is. Okay, I think you know what time it is. It is time for... Tea Trivia Time! (laughs) Did you guys like that? Was that awesome? I worked on that this morning. I hope that was fun. All right, guys, it's tea trivia time. Here we go. I always like to get a few questions that are topic relevant. These are not to test your skill. These are not to embarrass you. These are not to make you feel like you don't know about tea. These questions are to have fun. Shoot out your answers. Take a guess if you don't know. We're just sipping tea. We're having fun. It's true. We're learning loads. It's super educational and super fun. That's what it's all about. So I wanted to say hi to Igor. I saw him come by mm-hmm. earlier. Bruna, hello. I want to say hi to some people before. Hey, Reiner, Reiner welcome back. Reiner, Reiner. Reiner from Germany. We've got Igor in from Spain. Thank you guys for joining. I know it's a little later over there. So mm. much thanks for uh, taking your, um, to, for sacrificing some of your sleep, I'm assuming. But uh, thanks for coming by. Yeah. All right. Question one. I just Let's wanted go. to say hi to people. Let's Cindy, go. I didn't say hi to you, JS. I just want to say hi to everybody. Yes. I I think I got everybody and uh, I wanted to say that Igor and I were already chatting this morning um, he uh, right after my morning routine I had a little chat with him so welcome back Igor good to see you again <laughs> all right tea trivia question one da, da, da. you need a more sound effect <laughs> my questions were a little messed up but they're all good now tea trivia folks here we go Taeguan Yin means a tie a knot tie a knot uh, take one in. It was a little play on words there. B, may the force be with you. C, iron goddess of mercy. Or D, greenest leaf. Okay, guys, take one in means. Okay, I'm, it's a warm up question, guys. Don't don't laugh if you feel like this is very pedestrian. Um, thanks, JS. Thanks for the fun intro comment. Uh, Fernanda pops out very quickly with C, but is it the right mm. answer? We don't know yet. Cindy also coming in with a C. Cindy with a C. JS, it seems unanimous with C, folks. If you're not sure, um, what do I say? What do I say at the casino? No more bets. The answer is C. Igor, just under the wire with C. Good job, buddy. All right, cool. So we're going on to question two. 
Next question for tea trivia: What year was the Hong Pao mother bush? What year was the Da Hong Pao mother bush last plucked slash pruned? What year was the Da Hong Pao mother bush last plucked or pruned? Would like to have B, but it's C. <laughs> he wanted me to force yeah. me with you. Yeah, me too, buddy. I, a writer, I was thinking that too. It should totally mean that. It kind of does. We'll get to that. Right. We're, it's actually in this in the in the book today. We're going to cover why Taeguan Yin in fact does mean "May the Force be with you." I'll I'll remind you when we get there because I don't think you even noticed that, but you might know what I'm thinking. Okay, folks. Uh, and I think he shoot shoot up the. Oh no, that's a smiley face. So we'll wait for some answers. The stream is looking solid today. JS is coming in with B. This is a tricky one, guys. JS, that's a great. That's a great one. I'm not going to give the answer yet. Reiner comes in with a D. Cindy with a C question mark. Fair enough. Throw out your guesses, guys. Guessing D. All great guesses. Igor comes in with a B. Okay, guys. I was. It's, I was too so chaotic. I'm just a brewing, and I was oh, like, sorry. oh, where I, is? I sound too much like an auctioneer. I gotta calm down. It's a okay. Bit. It's okay. You know, uh, I, I can handle it. I meant to introduce the show today like this. Mm. Good evening, and welcome to Sunday Tea Book. I'm Phil. And this is your hostess, Jen. Good. Oh, my is too low. <laughs> I was like. All right, guys. Great bit. guesses. I'll I'll take it down a notch. Mm. Okay, I was a little bit. I'm pretty stoked about this one. I right? love that. It was, he has been stoked the whole morning because he spent most of the time doing the tea trivia and yeah. during the whole process, he is super hyped. Okay, so um, the answer is, and I purposely put a bunch of tricky answers on this one. The answer is actually A, 2019. Mm. Right. It's yes. actually A, believe it or not. Um, it's the, not the last pluck that is mm. official making the tea. It's pruned last year. And it was quite a, a big news. Yeah, so they don't prune it every year, I believe. They, <gasps> well, no. We're going to talk about that later. Let's not ruin it. I think right. that's coming up too. So okay. that, there's more about Da Hong Pao. So I don't want to spoil all the future. Mm. I'll, I will tell you guys, I purposely put B there because B was the year that President Nixon was gifted 200 grams of Da Hong Pao by Mao. I can't say his full name, but you know Mao, the guy, Chairman Mao. Let's say that. Perfect. And the other ones are just plausible because it's an old bush. So, um, okay, JS says stay excited. I'm ramping it back up. Let's go to question three. <laughs> All right, tea trivia question three, guys. Taeguan Yin is by definition rolled into balls. Mm. True or false? Simple one. You got 50-50 this time, not 25. Okay, 50-50 chance. I do notice a little, the lagging is less. Oh yeah, the, shh, that's, oh, that's right, question right, right, right. five. That's question right, five. We have so many things. I gotta watch my mouth. We have tons of stuff. We have tons of stuff. I better just be quiet and. No, no, it's okay. It's not so <laughs> minefield. But so let's see. Uh, JS says, "Stay excited." I'm gonna read back a bit. Yeah, there are some oh, comments up there. Oh, JS has got some there. aged Hong Pao rocking. Ooh, mm. nice tea. I'm fully uh, jealous. Oh, but I think I missed something. Yeah, we missed a bunch of comments. So while the oh, answers come Cindy. in, we'll just have a look at some of your uh, comments from earlier. Right. So as soon as I. Also bought some of your Autumn Tegrain Premium mm. to compare to the classic. Mm. Really nice, That's yeah. a good choice too. Particular things I should look for in my comparison. Particular mm. things. I think autumn and spring difference is kind of neat. There's a, you're kind of looking at a lot of differences, right? Because it's a whole different style of process. Mm -hmm. Autumn Premium versus the uh, classic. But the first thing that popped into my head was the unique thing about the autumn Tegrain yes. is that harvest time. And you the do notice, time? I would do a regular, yes. our regular Taiwan Yin. Well, I would do the, I don't know, you, you talk, You're, this is your domain. <laughs> I think uh, like just talk about this specific batch that you get, like our current, uh, current batch. I feel like um, uh, it's mostly a lot of a mouse feel in terms of a difference. Mm. A classic is still uh, deeper. The premium is really nicely done. Uh, has more, I think, it's more floral. Mm -hmm. A little bit more floral, more uh, floating. Than like the Taiwan really Classic close. or than the regular Autumn Taiwan? Than the Taiwan Classic, which she's oh, a habit. Yeah, um, fair enough. And so curious to see if you yeah, get the same thing, just like yeah. the coconut we were talking about it's, earlier. It's really hard to because they're really similar mm -hmm. to me. Same cultivar, same producer, same garden, but uh, when you taste them, they're different. You, I, I believe you would notice that too. But yes. JS, yes, in the ne very next comment, I think, oh. oh no, I think Reiner said he's drinking some uh, kudin. Kudin, yes. Uh, do you know that? I don't know uh, that kudin one. Kudin is a kind of a, mm. not, not tea, it's a plant. Oh, very cool. It's an herbal then. Mm. Cool. And JS is drinking aged Hong Pao, which is a really yummy tea. Enjoy that, my friend. 
And, uh, but he's been dr dr drunk about 10 plus cups of the Huang Da Chao over the last 20 hours. So we had a big, <laughs> we had a big jug of it this morning with our mm. breakfast too. Mm, we yes. love that tea uh, for, um, you know, quantity drinking. Let's go see what the answers are for is Taeguan Yin by, is by definition. Sorry. Would consider sharing your, your tea trivia. I'd love to try that on my friends and families. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure exactly. What, I don't necessarily keep all the uh, you the, the pictures, screenshot. but you can grab screenshots and yeah, it's not proprietary. Mm -hmm. I do not mind at all. In fact, I love the idea. Everybody should share that with their friends and family if they're into it. Um, I don't mind at all. Thanks for uh, thanks for thinking of it That's a so highly. For That's us, really kind uh, of a uh, yeah, honor. It's, it's that, humbling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Flat. Okay. Uh, where are so we? We've got B. some answers here. So we've false. got a bunch of B's that are saying false. I don't see any B, A's C, D, at all. B. Wow, B. good job, guys. It is. Oh, here. Yes. It is indeed B false. Uh, take one in as um, well. We showed you the classic, I guess, if you're. All you had to do is pay close attention and you would realize that the uh, Taeguanyin is not by definition rolled into balls. I totally forgot we would be showing them the leaf. But anyway, very good job, guys. Very oh. good. On to, <laughs> right? I didn't realize on to, that either. I don't think that's the reason you got it right, for mm -hmm. example. I think probably y'all all knew that. These again are just for fun. They're a little warm up. Tea trivia question four. Da Hong Pao means A. Big flood roar. B. Quarreling cannon. C. Big red robe. Or D. Big red rug. <laughs> da Hong Pao means. Okay, I know this one. He, okay. he has been looking up Chinese characters and translations, spent a lot of time on this answer. I constructed this one carefully mm. to be quote unquote tricky, but I think because it's such common knowledge, it won't be so tricky. It's for common people. knowledge, and you have to know that because in English, they're quite different. In Chinese, they're similar. Mm. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't. So we've got a C from Cindy. We've got a. Yeah, the way I built this one mm. was really cute. I wish we could chat in the comment to put a little marker when the new question starts, but it doesn't really matter. Ah. Fernanda goes D, then she said, oh no, C, it's C. I think she just missed. <laughs> the I, yeah, they're right next yeah, to each yes. other on the keyboard. <laughs> Not to mention, I, I really appreciate all of you guys who are um, second language joining our uh, podcast. I wish we could uh, have translators in all the different languages, but it's really uh, generous of you guys to come, al come along and, um, and bear with us talking super fast, getting super excited, then other no, people encouraging me. Fast. I talk super <laughs> Okay, crazy. so um, Fernanda says robe. Everybody, that's correct. It is big red robe, Da Hong Pao. Mm. And um, yeah, question four. What? Oh, that was question four. This is question five. We are streaming over A, T telepathy, B, Wi-Fi, as we used to, C, satellite, or D, wired ethernet. I forgot the D. This is not a real tea trivia question, guys. This is to let you know that hopefully we won't have connection problems today. If you guys were with us for the last stream or the stream before that, we got disconnected. It was a bumpy road, um, but I managed to get a wire pulled through the floor uh, from way over there, way over there, and uh, all the way over to here. And hopefully we will not be disconnected. We will be with you the whole time, steady and smooth, with a nice little green icon in my lower left part of the corner. Yes. Folks, that so far so good. I really feel like the lagging is less. <laughs> it seems to be. Seems to be. So I. Hey, hey everybody guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I don't know. Okay, cool. So that was why I had that question. So guys, that was T trivia. Hey, um, did you guys hear the boom, boom, boom when I did the title screen? I just want to make sure that worked out okay. It should have worked. Um, it's a really important part of the effect, so I want yes. to double check. <laughs> is now a good time? There's a couple more, um, I don't know, it's I don't want to call it housekeeping because it's way more fun than housekeeping, but there's a couple more housekeeping things to do. I wanted to see if you guys, um, if you're interested in talking with us during the stream and having all the other streamers hear you talk, so I want to be clear that that's how it's supposed to work, but I'm not making any promises because you have all seen my technical abilities in action when I disconnect or when stuff doesn't work or anyway, when I don't set the scene in the, in the first. <coughs> so I wanted to share with you, we have a Discord channel now. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. I didn't know what that was like a week ago either. So, um, and Reiner says, yes, he did hear the sound effects. That's awesome. I just want to make sure that was hooked up right now that it's done, I won't mess with it. But A sounds real good, Rogue. Oh, somebody liked the big flood. Yes. I, I should have addressed that when the T trivia question was, but uh, who said A sounds really good? 
Was it JS? Yeah. yeah. So I looked up all the characters individually and I bent them into new names. That's what all of those names are kind of like possible. Not really in Chinese, but they're, if you go use a Chinese English dictionary, you could see where they come from. Mm. They're similar. The same spelling. If it's a pinyin, it's the same spelling, mm. but different tone, tone or different tones and character. characters are all messed up. Yeah. So that was a little backwards to the, the Hong Pao question. But um. Oh, hello, Simmerji. Hey, welcome. Simmerji. Welcome to the I stream. See you for a while. So, guys, what is the Discord about? So, it's this new thing that all the cool kids are doing, <laughs> where they usually use it for gaming, but we're using it for to make a little tea community. The mm -hmm. invite code is there. Um, you may be able to search it through other means, but if you go there and join our tea chat room, not the music and tea lounge, but the tea chat room, it's a voice channel, and then you connect, I should be able to hear you talk, and everybody on the stream should be able to hear you talk. Again, I'm not promising, and we'll be able to answer your questions and kind of have more like a community feel. So I have that, I think, set up. I'm not sure. I think, Fernanda, you helped me test that a while ago. So uh, thank you for that again. And we did have it working with Fernanda and Igor, um, who is also here. So thank you both for your help with that uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm giving it a shot again. I'm going to start and make this server, the Discord server, a little tidier. So there's the invite code. Um, I forgot to put the link in the description down below. That would have been brilliant, but uh, I forgot. So uh, I don't know, jot that huge, un not nice invite code down as quick as you can. And uh, good luck with that. So, but I'm going to go back to, uh, we can leave it here. It's a pretty big screen. Maybe people will join. I don't know. If, I, if you suddenly hear somebody through the MacBook 2, don't scream. It's all good. Okay? Okay. Whatever um, you say. So that's the Discord, and I think we're ready to get down with the Sunday Tea Book. You guys ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. All right. Where is it? I don't know where it is. Da -da 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 -da. There's so many now. Here it is. Oh, the guy one didn't pop up. Oh, well. <laughs> Usually the guy one pops up. It's okay. It's okay. And I just got to grab my book. So here we go. Sunday Tea Book, episode 23, guys. Tae Gwon Yin and Da Hong Pao. This is an epic, an epic episode. Uh, so we've gone through all of this. As Jem was saying, we're about two-thirds through the book. We covered green tea. There's the end of the green tea. We covered all the all this dark tea section. Uh, we did the, the beginning of oolong tea last week here. Mm -hmm. Ay, oh, Maya, that's really messy. <laughs> we did oolong tea here. <laughs> And today we're covering Iron Mercy and Red Robe Tea. Re they said robe tea. Robe tea, sorry. All Sounds right, like a morning tea. Right, robe. a bath, bath robe tea. Yeah. That's right. Iron Mercy Goddess. Oh, sorry. Iron Mercy Godness. Um, brewing difficulty. Easy to learn. Difficulty, four stars. Best tea tasting season, autumn. Since ancient times, tea and zen are close to each other. Named as Iron Mercy Goddess can give a ceremony to respect the Buddha while drinking tea every day. While casting the Iron Mercy Goddess into the pot, meditating the tea name, praying is within the process. I'll do another paragraph and then we'll come and unpack it, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a pretty long section. Let's just, maybe just unpack just the fin beginning. Just finish this, yeah. Finish which? Just finish this mini part. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. One. Let's do yeah. that. So where are my notes? They're not beside me like normal. Let me just jiggle jiggle. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I have them right here. Don't worry. Yeah, so paragraph one. Um, mm. I basically have a smiley face there. Um, I feel like it's a pretty, it's first, pretty it's pretty hard to translate. Mm. Uh, you know, and it, it just second, sounds like warm and fluffy. Really, like it's just it's a nice tea and you meditate. Yeah, it's kind of because it's a name after a god, right? Mm. S. What's S? A goddess. Goddess. A goddess. Yes, a goddess. Although, yes. although I, well, I don't know if she's updated her pronouns. Well, they're saying that uh, the gods shouldn't have gender. Neutral. Well, it's up to her to pick her pronouns, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Or Anyways, <laughs> don't be silly. Okay. Uh, anyway, so the, the thing to name that uh, because uh, there's always a chan cha yi wei is the same like zen and ti like chan cha yi wei. Yi wei means there. Oh, oh, that's that's Discord. I think somebody might talk. Hello. They can all. Oh yeah, I oh. should have mentioned that you won't hear us on Discord. You will only hear us over the stream. Our, our oh. Discord mic is... I meant to tell that during the Discord part. But you won't hear us on Discord. So you got to be... And I, I think that's an okay way to roll. So you can talk to us through Discord, but you have to hear us through the YouTube. So hopefully you can have those things running at the same time. 
Mm. Now back to our regular programming. <laughs> uh, so in general, it's just to say this, uh, you know, maybe having this tea is a way to serve the Buddha and stuff like that. Uh, it's not respect Buddha. Those are uh, uh, Buddhism terms, Li Fu means kind of a serve oh. them, like a kind of a, you know, religious uh, ritual. Right, thing. right. So this is a good point to mention that the uh, finished translation is already up on our website. Yeah. So the link is down below in the description. I think we started publishing, we used to publish it after Sunday mm -hmm. Tea Book, and then we realized it might be more useful to you guys if you want to pull that up along with your Discord and everything else you got going on over there. Uh, but if you want to pull that up, <laughs> we're from, so needy, <laughs> right? From the, from the link down below, you can follow along as we go through the actual book, you can see what we've got as our, as the finished uh, sort of updated, corrected mm. translation. All right. Yes. So that's a little uh, public service announcement for you there. I think it must not be working well because, um, yeah, Fernanda says she's beginning to learn tea, so bear with me. You know what? Yeah. I, that's a good one for everybody, right? Everybody, no worries, okay? We're not here to, uh, we're here We're here for that, exactly, for that's beginners, right. uh, everybody. So now we're moving on to the next paragraph. Mm -hmm. Still remain fragrance after being brewed seven times. Iron Mercy Goddess is most famous name in oolong tea, which renowned both at home and abroad. Iron Mercy Goddess is produced in Ansi Town, Fujian Province, on behalf of the Oolong Tea of South Fujian Province. Brewing Iron Mercy Goodness, Godness, means Gong Fu tea, needs Gong Fu tea sets. The temperature should be around 90 degrees C. There still remains fragrance after being brewed seven times with both mellow of black tea and delicate fragrance of green tea and accompanied by a fragrance of orchid because the place where Iron Mercy Godness grows, so is the orchid. Sandfire teapot can show the real taste of tea. Brewing Iron Mercy Godness, not only, <laughs> I'm gonna say that every time, not only good for mine, but also raise pots. There is a saying about Iron Mercy Godness that once tasted hard to give up, which shows considerable resistance to ruminate. Okay, let's unpack this. This one what was- What is ruminate? I have no idea. Um, oh. Like reminisce, I think. Are you an English speaker? Yeah, I'm an English speaker. And um, drinking, oh, Alex has joined up. Hey, Alex, uh, he's drinking some green ball rolled taeguan yin with us. Awesome, great. That is so fun that uh, we've got uh, several folks having uh, taeguan yin. I have a question though. Mm -hmm. Fernanda, did you talk on this board? Because I can hear the... The, the badoop, badoop, badoop. Yeah. So they can't like... hear that too much because we're here, not Okay. There. And I when hope. was she commenting like a beginner? So I was thinking maybe she said something on Discord that we didn't hear. Is yeah. that possible? Just let it's, us know. It's very possible. Because we didn't so hear definitely anything let us know. We except didn't... the notification. Yeah, there's little things. Maybe. And we can't read the chat on Discord. So um, um, if you're text chatting with us on Discord, we cannot read it. See? And hopefully that beep boop, beep boop isn't too loud for you guys. You let us know, okay? This is a little bit new, a little bit experimental. I'm always pushing us forward, trying to tighten up the community. Ruminate, to consider or think about. There we go. Oh. Thank you, Philip Aiken. Appreciate that. So, um, to consider or think about. Mm, oh, not rem okay. not memory. It's just it to uh, concentrate on something okay. or think about it. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. Okay. So mm. here we are in the remains fragment for seven steps. So para one. Um, it was actually not bad. It's, it's a little later, it comes unglued. What I wanted to say about okay. Para 1, because they talk about ANSI, mm -hmm. is I wanted to mention to you guys, again, in the links down below, when I, whenever I read about the origin of Taeguan Yin, I remember Xiping and our visit to there. So in Chaoren 2019, there is an article, uh, The Lost Gem of Taeguan Yin. So I put the link to Chaoren down below. It's a free magazine that we make every year, except when there's COVID. And, um, <laughs> And for just <laughs> dr just drop in your email address and the magazine is yours. Yeah. All right. To enjoy. And it's full and of great in-depth mm. information. Yes. And you can download it. You can read it online, whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I had to say about Para One. Shameless mm -hmm. self-promotion. Okay. Fernanda didn't talk. That's good. Because whenever I hear those, I was like, oh my God, a technical issue. <laughs> mm. Which I have to say, again, full disclosure for the Discord side. Very likely technical issue because it's not straightforward to set that up, but I think I nailed it. I did a little test beforehand. Anyway, para okay. two was okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's the guy one, uh, the times. I have a note that says the times. Right. I want to um, uh, mention that like the mini title on mm. the book, uh, still remain fragments after 
being brewed seven times. I always a, forget to address the title. That's a really good point. Yeah, in Chinese is a qi pao you yu xiang. Uh, like the dress? Qi pao? No, qi pao, oh, seven qi pao. brew. Again, uh, oh, seven pao. is, uh, uh, how should I say, it? like a vague number. It's not oh. seven, literally seven brews. Got you. Uh, means just, quite uh, a few. Yes, oh. after a while. It just mm. means this is a really good tea cultivar that uh, has really a lot of a power to brew many infusions mm -hmm. so uh, uh that is so true yeah like, i want to just like that's such an interesting point and that's one of the sort of cultural slash language differences because they sort of smush into each other right culture mm -hmm. and language is that sort of acceptance to that vagueness um although like again it's it's not vagueness it just means a lot or mm. quite a few um, but but because they use a number, you could op I don't know if I should say often, but you will sometimes see those types of ideas mistranslated as, yeah, as direct yeah. number seven. And not groups, just a, which, which like happened a, here. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not just a English. Sorry, what? Nothing. Just English, uh, like a trans translator, could uh, for a lot of the Chinese people because those are a little bit like more ancient Chinese talking. Mm. Sometimes they're specific. Sometimes they're not specific. Right. It really relates right. on the whole context uh, context oh. yeah so it's a gotcha. little bit tricky like a uh, uh, in previous episode we talk about a character that if you put it before the word green it means darker well if you put that uh, before the word white the same character means pale more pale mm. so it's kind of a contextual right it's a, it's a context sensitive one, yeah because right? every now and then i got a question that is very literal to certain books so whenever there is this kind of a things i would like to point it out no no that's what we're here for that is what it is all about mm. so um that was a great point and they talk a little bit about general brewing kaiwan yes um, i'm glad you mentioned this seven times i just thought it was i thought it was an exact number two and just was kind of like cute like a little um, not not meant to be taken so tight, but it actually just means quite a few times. Right, and uh, also you mentioned orchid, so uh, mm. that's a Chinese orchid. Chinese orchid are quite different than the ones mm. we have in supermarket here. Right. When I just got here, I often tell people about orchid aromas and stuff like that, and I think uh, many people are very. Uh, Applied and don't want to really ask or really right, get into right. that till one day when I was in supermarket hmm. Loblaws I realized that the orchid here like the table yeah, big display like this, the right? big, big ones and stuff They don't actually have much of the flowers. The, I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm. they don't have much of the uh, aroma, aroma, right? Right, so uh, uh, so just want to you can search a Chinese orchid and look at them. They look almost like grass with a little white flowers. So those are fragrant, but very gentle, light, delightful, yeah. uh, flowy kind of Did you of say like like the, the blades are like grass, right? They That's, really look and, like grass Yes, to it, me. it looks like mini little daffodils almost actually more the than the flower. Yes. The little mini white, it's mini like a one. mini white daffodil yes. with those almost but similar blade-like like leaves. Like leaves. Yeah. yeah. So you can see. I'm they just look, curious because we have so many different countries represented here. Like, because well, uh, yeah. we said this, we have orchid happen. in the supermarket. But let us know what your orchids look like, or if you're familiar with the mm. sort of big tropical ones with the thick woody, a single stem, thick woody stem then, and the waxy round mm. leaves, or do you, have you seen these sort of more Asian or Asian uh, orchids with the little white flowers? Mm. Anyway, the the main message was that's the aroma, not those big uh, juicy ones, mm. not the jungle ones. Yeah. Cool. So Cindy, uh, wait, maybe we should finish. Sorry. Oh. I am just okay. a little bit all over. <laughs> then I think paragraph, Third paragraph three. Yeah, I had a little uh, question about this. Pretty okay. fired is Yixin no, Tipa. Right, yeah. What's your question? I, I have to remember to point those out because I have to approach every episode like a new, there can be new people, right? Mm -hmm. But if you've been here a while, you realize that the book does translate Sam fired as clay, clay, uh, Yixin clay. Mm. I, forgot to, I forgot to mention that as a question. I didn't do my job well. Dock my pay. <laughs> but I did notice that the last sentence, I have poem alert, question mark. Poem alert. Is there a poem going? Because everything's pretty good. Basically, mm. you use a yeasting teapot, you get the nice taste, and it's, um, it's yeah. good for the pot, too. Kind of We're, recommend this, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. recommended. Um, but then it says, there is a saying about iron mercy godness that it's once It's a saying, tasted, it's not a poem. Okay, not a poem, just yeah. a saying. But it's chunky. Like oh. the ending, to give up, 
hard to give up, which shows considerable resistance to ruminate. Mm. It's basically it's really the saying is just that once you taste it, it's uh, hard to. It's you leave it. You're uh, hard not gonna, to leave it. You're yeah. just gonna. Re- You're hooked. Yes. First uh, hits free. Yes. <laughs> that's why we do tea samples, folks. Right there. Right there. Um, so that's the saying. Basically, it means that it tastes really good. Right on. Mm. All right. There's lots of comments, guys. We're not Ruminate going to ignore really you. Ruminate is a good one for, for the lexicon, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to finish up the Tig Yin section, then we're going to hammer the comment section. So um, keep commenting, keep staying interactive while I read. Appreciation always before drinking. I'm going to do both these sections. Yeah. Features of dry tea. Curly strips, fat and round together, heavy and even, sand green, wholly looks like the head of dragonfly. Bzz. Enjoying while tasting. Durable fragrance, obvious lingering charm, with a footnote which I will address in a moment. I was like, what's with, I guess it's dragonfly? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Even though they're more like, like they have that more wing sound. Anyway, mm. sorry about that, guys. Durable fragrance, <laughs> obvious lingering charm, again, footnote that I'll address in a moment, with a taste of orchid, ground nut kernel, and coconut. The color of tea soup is golden, orange, and it tastes mellow, sweet, and good, fresh aftertaste. Mm. Footnote. Lingering charm is the quality characteristic of Iron Mercy Godness. It is determined by the internal matter. The proportion of low boiling point aroma is obviously more than other oolong tea. This special aroma and taste is called the lingering charm of Iron Mercy Godness. Goddess. Oh, whoops, too far, too far. Sorry guys, if that made you dizzy, get back into position. All right, unpacking, appreciation before drinking. Um, it's pretty just describing the shape, right? I just mm-hmm. had one question because we did talk about classic. It looks like they say curly strips. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, is that the classic one? Or then the fat and round together is the balls or is did they just leave out the, the classic mm. here? Because classic is a it's little bit... It's not a fat and round because round uh, would make us think about something round, right? But well, it's just uh, the... T- uh, how should I organize my things here, okay? I'm, I mean, uh, what is it, if to uh, summarize what's the classic shape of Tie Guan Yin is Qin Ting Tou Ke Dou Wei, which means mm. dragonfly's head. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, say that again. Qin Ting Tou Ke Dou Wei. Dragonfly. If you want to hear that again, just shout out on the comments. That was <laughs> awesome. No, it's just so pretty. Dude. Sometimes they're like... Sorry, sorry about that. Go ahead. I know, I know that in fact. I like to listen to people speak different language. Mm, I don't need mm. to understand. I just love to mm. hear the sound. But, uh, so it means a dragonfly's head and tadpole? Tadpole's, tadpole's tail. tail. Mm. So what that means is the shade, the front is a little bit curled and the end, whichever you choose, we call that. Thank you, Simmerji. It's okay, keep going. Okay. Um, so that's the look. So talking about the fat and round, it's not saying it has to be like a bowl, but it just right. is talk about the whole feeling about the leaves are pretty sturdy, have weighty kind of look. Mm. And it's a, in general has a little curvy, but slightly stripped look. Like if you think about the dragonfly's head and tapple's tail, it's not a uniform one shape like straight or curl. It has both right, kind of in right. together. Yeah, you got the ball and then right. the... Uniformed. Oh, right. Then you want that uh, grain here. You call that sand grain. It's a uh, literal translator. So in tea language, mm-hmm. when we say sha lu, it's more uh, almost like... Uh, oh, sha lu. Yeah. Zhe it, sha. Sha lu. Mm, same. The same character, mm. but it mm. means the shades of grain, almost like the frog's skin. It's uh-huh. a little bit uh, brown green, dull or like okay. a darker green right, kind of thing. Right. Yeah, with some lustres and stuff. Those are tea turns. Let us know if we were interested in future episodes about like tea turns, specific tea mm. turns. I don't know how we, we do that, but just to see. If yeah, no, interested. it's a great topic. It is a great topic. Yeah. Um, so that's the shape. Cool. Like so that a, was the appreciation before drinking shape, mm. and um, and then in enjoy while tasting. Um, I wanted to talk about the footnote because, again, yes. it seems like, again, if I'm new to tea, mm-hmm. lingering charm, and then they footnote charm or lingering right. charm, 
and talk, oh, they footnote lingering charm and explain it. And I feel like this is again another. This is another tea term. Uh, yes, and I think and I know I'm, what it is, but I wouldn't definitely wouldn't have if I'm new to tea. Mm -mm. Can um, I take a guess? Yeah, I think it's a type of yun. I don't say yes. that very well, guys. That's but very well said. Is that, okay, it is like that's it's that. A, Yes. Throat, I made a really funny face when I did that, but it's like throat, throat feel kind yes. of deal. It's called Yin Yun. Uh, I prefer not to uh, translate that, but to mm. explain that. So if you go to the link the, uh, below to the full translation, you will see how to spell it. Y-I-N, mm. Y-U-N, Yin mm. Yun. Or sometimes known as Guan Yin Yun, right? Tie Guan Yin, Guan Yin Yun. Mm -hmm. What that means, uh, Yun is almost a collective of really hard to describe. You need to expand to communicate with the people right right so it's that unique tie guan yin flavor and taste and that effect on the throat on the mouth yes uh, it's not a specific like flavor like blueberry or apple or yeah or it's all orchid. it's, a, it's like, more yeah. of a feeling slash flavor but i want to yeah just... but it come only has that it's a quality kind of a, mm -hmm. a indication right that it could have such effect right on like physical level kind of effect. Yeah. And I want to tell, let folks know, like uh, when I first heard about this, I was like, what? I never experienced that in my life. And um, don't worry, um, if you keep tasting tea, keep paying attention and like uh, to maybe check out our how to taste tea video. That was a mm. big game changer for me, especially in terms of finding nuances like yun. And if I'm not mistaken, right, we're talking mm -hmm. today about yin yun, but I've but uh, it's it's yun can be with other tea as well. It's not yeah. exclusive coming to tea. Oh, coming up with the raw tea, right? So anyway, I just wanted to encourage people who are newer to tea to um, take the time to. It's it's good. This is going to sound weird, but take the time to learn how to taste. And these these sort of more um, nebulous and more, more um, delicate uh, feelings mm -hmm. with, and and flavors actually those both. But in terms of yun, the feeling will come to you. With time and practice, um, so don't don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, that's perfect. Let's look at. Let's have a. Comments. Let's head over to the comments. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I'm gonna put the book in the back for now, mm. and see how it's going with the comments. Where oh, I really we? love just to close my mouth and just breathe out. This tea is so delightful. Mm. Yeah, we haven't had classic in a long time. I was excited to have this. Mm. We kind of queue up the teas when we're doing the, the tea book. We, obviously, we try to make them theme relevant, but I always try to pick teas that I'm like, oh, I haven't had this in a while. I'm going to put that on the list because there's really, an excuse to have it. I'm really excited for this month's all the live episodes because it's Christmas. So I kind of line it up in a very uh, luxury month. Put a lot of expensive right, teas Right, right. Yeah, we purposely did that. And then we've got our end you December. Know, holidays. Did we, were you talking about the... The December schedule? Yeah. Yeah, so the oh, December right. schedule is up on our website. Mm -hmm. um, you can find it there. But yeah, we've got a series coming up right after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, where we're going to spoil the heck out of ourselves with some really fancy teas. Simmerji can definitely guess one of them. It's one, mm -hmm. of, it's one of his faves, I think. I don't want to assume I know your fave, but it's a black tea. Reiner says uh, he's new to Discord, needs some time to get used to it. Reiner, new to Discord. This guy right here, don't worry about it. I'm getting used to it too. The server's really basic. It's really pedestrian. I'm going to work on it. We're going to work on it together. Suggestions are welcome from those of you that are more experienced or those from you who are new to it and have a good idea. Just throw it out. Like, I'll see what I can do. Um, Cindy, I need to actually brew the tea. I'm just enjoying smelling the aroma of the leaves and the warming. I, I totally get it. I totally okay, get it. Okay, everybody shout out if you know exactly what Cindy's going through and you're like, you realize you're 10 minutes into your session and there's not a drop of water on the leaf. Yeah, I, sometimes at the <laughs> end I get um, a little bit upset with myself because I need to boil the water again. Yes, right? yes. You get yes. cool. You're like, oh, darn. <sighs> On a, and if it's a really good tea, I actually just put the water in our waste bucket, and which we reuse for plants. But then right. I um, uh, reboil, reboil right. a new pot. So that happens. I would have taken uh, seven as an exact number. Yeah, yeah, those are really tricky. We had I learned that little trick with Jiu Homme. Yes. Nine curly black. Nine three. Beauty. Sometimes we use a lot of right. numbers. We use as. Figurative talking. Mm. What I learned today was that's a it's an older technique, less used nowadays. Was that less right? Less used mm. as the more scientific. 
right the scientific part world in our takes, life yeah. now I, I found that's a, a a little bit of like culture difference as well yeah it's culture like, it's a like living when culture. we communicate mm -hmm. i'm really loose in terms of yes. like certain things that gets him really frustrated sometimes yeah where 100%. he's overly for me i feel like he was overly picky I'm so or picky little, and precise yeah oh, we're turning yellow oh no we're back, we're to, back green. to green <laughs> We're super Heart sensitive attack. about the stream quality. If the stream starts to get choppy or anything, guys, just shout out too. We'd love to know because mm. we're kind of new at all of this. So, um, you know, thanks for bearing through all of our technical difficulties and stuff. But yeah, let us know if we get jerky or the sound goes bad or something weird happens. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I want to spend a moment on that because again, that's what Sunday Tea Book is all about is, um, yeah, that use of a precise number to mean something in general uh, is uh, it actually does transmute into the whole cultural approach to the need for precision which I don't know I guess I don't know if it's me because I'm an engineer or I feel like in general in the, the in the west because, in the west we're a little bit more delineated um, we want as much detail as possible whereas it feels like in the in the east it's more like as much detail as necessary which is sometimes not much to get the gist and we do have little uh, little conflicts about that sometimes because I'm uh, so picky that she wasn't quite right and I'm like well you said this not this uh, anyway yeah. we will save you that you'll see that live if you stay with our channel long enough <laughs> anyway on to the comments again so uh, Fernanda says oh, I got completely different flowers, flowers. we have more uh, uh, Sibidium 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 in okay. here well, Os, Osimbidium, I don't know, that's a, a Latin name, so it's probably pretty easy to look up and it probably has a different name here. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it might be the actual botanical name. More of, we have more of Osimbidium, okay. In Germany, you're going to write that down, good call. Yeah, I want to so, see that. And Reiner says in Germany, the big jungle orchids are more generally known. Yeah, okay. I think they're the ones that people consider like sort of luxurious because they're pretty hard to keep alive, as I understand. Um, mm. And Simmerji, thanks, dude, for throwing the code up for everybody. I really appreciate that. I'll try and be more uh, prepared next time and put it in the comments below. Honestly, I, I put the Discord up as a last-minute thing. JS says, oh, that's so exciting. Feel free to reach out if you have any cues about Discord. I use it mm. fairly often. Thanks, oh, JS. Really great. appreciate it. I think you're already there, so I will at you if I have any. Because I've got some, I did some Googling and I got some ideas, but I'll at you maybe to get some help with it. And uh, I eventually will be looking for people to help out with in terms of taking on a little bit more of a role to be able to keep things set up or whatever. So uh, I think that's a normal thing that happens in Discord. So uh, anyway, stay tuned for that. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, Fernanda says, the, but the big ones from the jungle that are called Catlea, those have a, a light, lovely fragrance. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So it's also about orchids or the... And Fernanda, if I'm not mistaken, is down in South America. So that could be quite different again, which yeah. is interesting because we're talking about two northern hemispheric orchids. And there's like, that's the jungle. I'm sure they have some pretty amazing orchid family things. Absolutely. Hmm. But it's just interesting to know how the, or the same uh, a word or something could mm. mean different things mm. for different people. I like to yeah. smell that to jungle. Yeah, me too. And Simmerjeet says, awesome, a new way to interact. I've mostly been on Slack till now. Yeah, Slack, me too, yeah. right? For probably same reason too, from the corporate perspective, that's everywhere. Uh, this seems to be more, I, like I said earlier, right? What the cool kids are doing. So, uh, cool kids. and why did I gravitate see, towards see, it? See, see. Yeah, the cool kids club, right? So um, why did I gravitate towards it? Not because all the cool kids are doing it, because during this whole lockdown thing where we're kind of not able to go to festivals, we're not able to hang out in person, we're not able to do seminars, I'm just hungry for any way we can. This is really fun. I love this, but it's also very unidirectional. Uh, we love your chat comments. Don't get me wrong. Keep them coming. Keep the questions coming. What you're brewing. How's your tea tasting, by the way? In all sincerity, let us know how your tea's tasting. Um, we love that. But if I can make the table smaller and tighter and more intimate, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try mm -hmm. and do it. And I know it's hard over these electronic mediums, but I'm going to try. 10 times out of 10, folks. Shall we head back to the book? Yes. There we go. The guy wants back. Now I know what happened. I know what oh, happened. Yeah? yeah, I made sure that I didn't want to put that transition on every single screen. So it was oh. only on one screen. Anyway, now you guys know the secret behind the curtain of Oz. 
that was a Wizard of Oz reference, in case you don't know. Thank you. No, it's for her, folks, not for you. Unless you also <laughs> didn't know that was Wizard of Oz, then it was for you too. I'm in a sharing mood. You're in luck. Robe T. All right, stop talking. Start reading. Robe tea, brewing difficulty. Easy to learn. Difficulty, four stars out of five. Best tea tasting season, autumn. Robe tea is the expert performer in Wuyi Rock Tea, in a reputation of topmost master, which is produced in the northeastern part of Wuyi Mountain. Now in Kowloon Warbler, there are 600-year-old trees, which are the national treasure. I'm going to just have a quick peek at the next section. I'm just going to rock through the whole section, okay, guys? Um, and then we'll come back and do the whole thing at once. It's not that long. <laughs> Robe tea was born on the cliff of Wuyi Kowloon Warbler. I have no idea what that is. There still remains the stone carving Robe tea by monk Tianxing in 1927. Where sunshine is short, more reflected light, big temperature difference between day and night, small roof spring infiltration flow drops all year. Such special environment creates the specific quality of Robe tea. Nowadays, the robe tea has been older than a hundred years and has become a rare treasure. The six huge robe tea bushes have been protected by the nation. It was allowed to pick every spring before, but this has been forbidden since 2006. Yeah, I'll finish the last two mini sections, okay? Appreciate always before drinking. Features of shape, tight and gathered, green and bright. Enjoy while tasting. The color of soup is orange and the most distinctive is the fragrance and orchid flavor, which is strong and durable and obvious rock charm. There's that charm word again. There's Stay Dr. T and uh, Dr. TQ and A. Are you going to do that now or later? Let's do that after. I love to do a okay. little song for Dr. TQ and A, which I do live, folks. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Kowloon Warbler. What the heck? What is a Kowloon Warbler? Oh, yeah, I grabbed the peach instead of the mouse. You were right. Eventually, I got me. Told you. Kowloon Warbler. Now, if you're following along in the translation, I know that What's we... What's Kowloon? Kowloon I, is a Gou, Jiu Long. It's I a, thought it was Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah it's an area in Hong Kong. They also know as a Jiu Long. Mm. Uh, uh, what's a warbler? It's a kind oh. of bird. Ah? Oh. Yeah, I think warbler is a bird. Cool. Anyway, this location is called Jiu Long Ke. Jiu Long is uh -huh. the name. Ke is that uh, cliff structure that. Uh, right. So uh, that's where the mother bush of Da Hong Pao located. I think we talked about that in some of our Wu Yi videos, right? The different yes. structures. Yes, and also, uh, yes, and their names. Some is Ken, some is Jian. Yeah, and so. Here you have Ke. Down below again, I tried to put some links to those because uh, we were doing rock tea as well. Like, well, we're doing red robe. But uh, I put links to some of our Wuyi visit videos. Our mm. vlogs are down there. You can and, see that more mm. visually. And later on when this book yes. talk about uh, those, uh, how water dro drips through the rocks. Mm. So it's yeah, very... It, it's, uh, I couldn't, I kind of was like, okay, whatever. Like kind of over the rock. No, it comes through the rock. And it's granite. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I want to say something here that is uh, not very shown. It's a little cultural. Uh, background thing. So topmost master, does that have a special meaning for you or just topmost, topmost? Uh, it just means super badass. Okay. So I in think, Chinese, let me know if anybody knows of any, but it just means really mm, awesome. In Chinese, we call that cha zhong zhuang yuan, right? Zhuang yuan is a special word. What? Not cha dong zhuang yuan? Cha, cha zhong zhuang yuan. Okay. Zhuang yuan is okay. a special word. It means the number one. Of what? Number one of the national exam so this is a diff a, a cultural difference is uh -huh. uh, uh i don't know you guys like, might have heard like you know tiger mom talking about how uh you know chinese parents were tough and isn't that a movie tiger mom I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, I think people just, in general. I feel like that's a in case you don't Asian. know, Tiger Mom is those typical Asian mom who just make their kids work super hard in school for the top grade, and if they're second in the class, they get a beat. Yes. <laughs> just kidding. I don't they, know about we that. We don't know about the beat. But what I'm saying is, like, people feel, uh, and uh, because it's a way to change your life, because you mm. uh, pursue the academics and stuff mm. like that. I just want to. Uh, here introduced. This is actually has a cultural lingering. It's not just a habit. It's in current state. Old right. times in ancient times, we have a system, uh, very similar to today's system. It has been 
in the, in the you know dynasties for over fourteen hundred years, where the、Whoa. dynasty selected people from every class to be the officials in the central government or any government system. So、mm. all times in feudalism、Pause. in the oh no no you don't forget where you are. I don't have to say it's not、seven. too much.、Okay. It's really interesting, it's but I just want to point out. It's really important cultural difference, but I just wanted to. You just said it, they select people from every class. I、yeah. want to stress that, okay? Because you heard how long ago and how long they've been doing. That's pretty interesting, I think. So they really have the.、Yeah. I don't want to make a big deal about it, but just let that sink in for a while. Okay, carry on. Yeah, I just want to mention like old times, like、uh, in the West of feudalism, a lot of that, like、uh, you know, like nobles are noble and farmers are forever farmer. But in China, the system is you could by learning, by、mm. reading and stuff, you could participate、oh, in so- this kind of exam and one day become the. Uh, An important official. Or? Important official, not saying prime minister, like the state of、uh, like high official number one,、right. number two. You could be like right, that. Right. So even、uh, your family has been farmers for ages. So、mm. that system has existed for a long time. So who? What is a zhuang yuan? Zhuang yuan is those who won the number one place in those exams. Wow. Okay.、Yes. So it's kind of like number one on the SAT score. Something national but,、uh, SAT. But even probably harder. Yes, because it doesn't、wow. happen every year. Right.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. So that's what. But that's so, how we select、uh, officials. Really similar to nowadays、uh, system. You know, based on scores and、uh, your performance and stuff and oh, everybody. Oh wow! I thought we、similar. vote for them, which is you just any clown can get voted in anyway. No, a vote <sighs> is one thing, but to be a、uh, to get a position, get right, in a position.、Okay. Right. Right. Oh, we go through a regular like a,、yeah. a selection process, like an interview process kind yes, of thing. Right. Yes. Yes.、Ah, cool. So that's the drawing and the national、mm-hmm. exam number one place.、Uh, that's just some. Okay.、Way. So,、um, and that was the only question I had there. That's really you were right.、Uh, topmost master didn't stick out. It just、okay. meant like it's really awesome. Okay. But this actually is the、um, ultra top kind that of thing. That word still used today. If somebody、uh, won the top place of some major, like a, maybe、thing. a chess grandmaster, you would say he's the one you won in the world of chess. We're more talking about exam ish kind、okay, of okay, thing. Okay. 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 Not skills. Not like sports. And yeah.、Stuff. Yeah. Okay. So born on the cliffs, all right. Just like Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. This one's born on the cliff. <laughs>、um, yeah. So Kowloon Warbler showed up again. So I guess you already gave the opinion for that, which was、yeah. uh, I forget already, but. Jiulong Ke, I just spelled that.、Uh, mm, okay. Ke, I wonder where she got Warbler. Is, I don't know. Is Ke also、Maybe、a bird? The character for Ke could be a certain like a nest-ish. Because I think that's a pretty geographic thing that maybe regular yeah, Chinese people don't know. Yeah, it's a local, local way of saying things. Okay. Yeah. So um. Oh, well, and、Cindy、I wanted to point out. Cindy said she loves the tea, toasty, rich, and floral. Oh, awesome!、Mm. Thanks, Cindy. Totally agree. So this this carving, I wanted to point out that、um, again in the video we actually stand right under the tree and you can see the carving.、Yeah. But in, if ever you're in China and you see a red Chinese characters carved into the rocks and a tea bush near them, stop and take a picture. That's a mother bush of something, right? <laughs> usually important in bushes. Yeah, it's usually an important bush, right? White、yeah. tea. Time when we have that. Yeah, the way they put that, the monk Tianxin feel like the Tianxin is the monk's name. It does, but、uh, it's not. It's the、uh, monks from Tianxin Temple. Uh, ah. Check out the full translation on the website. Right, right. So they're still covering by the Tianxin monks, is how. Yes. Yeah, got it. And, and then there's a bunch of geography here, right?、There's、it kind of, of shows the、mm, superior, super the, the superior, superior terroir. T- yeah. I wanted to talk a bit about it because, again, I think in this trans, in our Finnish translation, it's much better. But sunshine is short.、Uh, again, it's kind of a side effect of the cliff. But again, if you've watched、mm-hmm. our videos for a while, you know. We're that, talking about direct sunlight、mm, is short. And this says reflected light, but yeah, exactly. It's actually more、um, indirect sunlight.、Mm-hmm. Um, And there's a big temperature swing. It's all about this sort of mountain geography. The the mountains also obscure the sun naturally.、Mm-hmm. This one was really important though because this is really unique. I mean, not so unique, but pretty unique to Wuyi,、mm. where you've got these springs everywhere. The 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 rock the is is bleeding water、mm. all the time.、Um, It's really cool, like a totally a big slab of a stone, and there's orchid. How could they survive there? 
Yes, yeah, uh, orchids are growing right out wild, the side of the cliff. Oh, lily. Wild lilies, lily. Lilies, lilies, sorry, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we point them out in the video. But I'd also like to point out that, um, uh, like, I think in the Finnish translation, you mentioned that this is a little stream flows there, allowing a little water all year. We didn't get that here at all. So the Finnish translation has a little bit of this sorted out. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, and yeah, all of this stuff in Wui, it's, uh, it's great for the Dahong Pao mother bush. But it's also great, great for, for everybody there. Yes. It's all over the place. Yeah. Uh, and then in the next pair, um, um, no, that's about all I had here. Spring water fed year round. Small roof. Yeah, small roof I didn't get, but I think it, it's better just to get that in the finished translation, mm. right? Um, and it's an old bush, right? So the, the mother bush is actually over 100 years old. Mm. Something 360. And we had that in tea trivia, right? It was used to pick every year, but in 2006, I should have put that in. Mm. When did they stop plucking the mother bush every year? But they deal, still do, um, they still need to do pruning, pruning from time to time, but it's much more rare now. Yeah. Appreciation, um, green usually means green, but green doesn't really apply here. But I think they mean like a slightly green hue to the brown. Dark green brownish mm. color. Yeah. yeah. So Breen is often, we, we've seen this a few times. I'm not sure how that happened. I think it was a find and replace spell check or something. But right. It could be typo. G and B are really close. Yeah. It's really consistent though. Oh. That's why I say global find and replace maybe with uh -huh. a, with a okay. slip of the finger. Oops. And then enjoy while tasting. Um, I was, so orchid, some of you who are more experienced, if you're new to tea, you might just take this at face value, but some of you who are more experienced might be like orchid in a rock tea. But it's pretty, I think it's sometimes overlooked that uh, a, a good and or a great rock tea should always have, like I think we think of them, we tend to think of them with that booming smoky tobacco, uh, granite, all those hard ones, but it should have a, a delicate floral yes. to make that great. Yes. So, Yan Gu Hua Xiang, okay? Yeah, exactly. Yan Gu Hua Xiang for, <laughs> for key character, a one word, very key to a quality rock tea has the rock tea bone structure, but the flush mm. is that soft aroma, like floral aroma. Mm. And it kind of implies the material as well as the process altogether has mm. to be really good. Wow, that's a really powerful sentence. So that's, and that's what we look for in a, in a great tea is great material mm -hmm. combined with great process. And each of them by themselves can only go so far. Yeah. And guess what time it is, folks? Dr. T Q and A, yeah. All right, let's go to comments for a little bit because there's a couple comments out there. Yeah. We'll head back over here. I gave you the song, but I'm not giving you the text yet. <laughs> All right, so Cindy said, yeah, I love the tea. Speaking of top student in exams, I remember reading the story several hundred years ago. A student went to Capital City to take part in the Imperial exam. The monks in a temple of uh, Wuyi offered her accommodation these monks made tea plucked from the plants and the rocks to cure his illness. The student recovered and he went on his way to the capital. And hopefully... Yes, and continue that legend is he won the Zhongyuan position huh? that we talked about. And because of know, the tea, folks. Drink tea to be smart. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you're Zhongyuan, you have to... Uh, not you have to, but the emperor directly gave you uh, a new set of clothes, like glamorous. No, oh, you it's can like go a home huge and honor, right? Yes. It's a huge honor. With a red robe, and he gave that to the tea. Is that where the tea? Day. Kind of. I oh, that I was gonna ask. Where does big red robe come from? This is uh, one of the, the legends. It's the legend, one of the legends, right? Mm. And that's a good thing to know too. Like all the teas that have an origin story, don't be upset, offended, or alarmed if you hear several versions. It's perfectly normal. Yes. Remember how we're loose about those? It's just. You know, having fun. Yes. The monks and the tea they serve him as a, that he took off the red robe he was wearing and he used it to cover the tea tree on the rocky slope. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. Nice, yes. nice. Another, yes. That's awesome. Well, Good. thank you for... Uh, thanks, Cindy. Yes. That was for a, the story. Yeah, thanks a lot. That's awesome. And I don't think we missed anybody, right? Uh, no, I so don't exciting. think so. Yeah, no, we're good. So let's get back to... Do, 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 do. Dr. T. Maybe I can have a story time after we. Talk oh, for about sure. It. <laughs> Guys, give us a shout out if you want to hear Jen's story time, all right? Give us a shout out on the uh, chat right there. What is rock charm? Dr. T. Q and A right now happening. The charm of tea mainly refers to throat charm. While yeah. tasting good tea, the fragrance remains between the lip and teeth 
mellow and durable aftertaste. The throat charm of rock tea is also called rock charm, which is strong and durable, clear and thick, smooth and sweet. The saying, the most fragrant flavor is based on the rock, refers to this conception. All right, so... Really hard to translate paragraph. I think it was a little... But it did a great, quite great job, I have to say. Yeah, it was a little bit lost in there. I have the saying. I didn't really recognize the saying. The saying was a little bit lost. But again, I think they're talking about, uh, in this case, throat charm or yun. Uh, I don't... I should say that... Um, our, we've kind of, I th I'm going to take a strong position on this. I'm not sure if you agree, mm -hmm. but, but uh, I don't think yun should be translated. There's so many tea words that aren't translated, especially with Japanese uh, teas. We just use the word. And I think yun is one of those concepts that I think you kind of hinted at that earlier. Mm -hmm. Is it's just too easy to get lost. So let's just call yeah. it yun. You can say yun if you can't say yun. I can't even say it right. It's a bit tricky. How, mm -hmm. Right? How do you say it? Yun. Yun. Anyway, you gotta um, be angry. Yun. Yeah. So like um, this would be what? Um, uh, yan yun. Yan yun. Yes. Yan yun. Right. Remember yeah. earlier it was uh, yin yun. Right. Mm. Taeguan yin yun or guan yin yun. Now it's yan yun. It's rock throat charm or it's a rock. But I, I just like to say I call it rock yun. So mm. it's that that special throat feel that you get from a high quality tea. Um, and that's what Dr. T Q and A was all about. Right, and uh, throat charm is ho yun, talking about how that tea make yun. your mm. throat fill. Yeah, but you'll hear people call. Sometimes they'll call it rock rhyme. I think that's also yun. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It so it's translated. Uh, they're both kind of um, not quite perfect. So that's why we think, hey, let's just stick with yun and call that uh, mm -hmm. ho yun. Yan yun, yin yun, yes. yun, yun. Yes. or whatever tea you're having yun. Yeah, the last <laughs> bit of the paragraph was talking about what I was just saying about the mm. rock, the bone, and the flower as the... Uh, oh, a, this know? part here? Yeah. This part? You can highlight this. Oh, highlight it. Yan gu hua xiang, this uh, floor. It's uh, in the quotes, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe go back. Just four characters. Oh, oh, sorry. This one and this three. Oh, here we go, guys. I'm going to okay. nail this. That's One, a, two, three, four. Xiang. That's four keywords talking about rock tea. Okay, so mm. that is the saying that's covering. You've got to have the aroma of the bones of the, of, the, of the rocks and, mm -hmm. the, and the flesh of the flower. Kind of thing. That's my um, translation. But no, in I like general, it. I like it. It, it kind of, I think that gives a decent image of the, uh, the contrasting elements in the tea is what that complexity is what makes mm. it so great mm. is those great bones with the really uh, still we talk about that a lot with really good tea when we get stuck in other tea videos you might have seen us like this one is like instead of using flavor notes we'll suddenly start using this is like a really those power a powerful gentleman who doesn't have to brag about his stat you know or a, or a beautiful woman who is confident as you know like but not overly confident you know, we start to use these characters, these noble characters to describe mm. tea because um, that's because they're so complex to describe flavor wise. They actually start to transcend, you know, in the end of the day, this is tea. It's not a orchid or a grape or anything. It's take one yin. Okay. So, um, so anything else on the text? I think I'm, oh, I wanted to just give a little teaser for uh, next week. Okay. Let's have a peek. I'm going to scroll real slow. Oh, this is going to be the Chinese for now. Yeah. Scroll Dong Ding Oolong. So coming up are going to be more Oolongs. We got the Dong Ding coming up. Not Ding Dong. Not Ding Dong. Dong Ding, the witch is dead. We've got Dong Ding and we've got a bunch of other great teas coming up. I don't even know what that is. Um, Te uh, Han. Yes. Te Han. Iron Arhat. I don't know what an Arhat is. It sounds a little bit rude, actually. And Wu Yi Kaysia is, I know this one too. Rogue. Rogue. Wait. All right, so some great teas coming up next week. That's enough. No more teaser for you guys. Um, <laughs> let's check out if there's any more comments. Yes. Um, and Cindy loves story time. So um, you did you tell your story? <laughs> Not yet. Not oh, cool. yet. So saying, Cindy loves story time. I thought you were nobody doing else, ending. I was like, nobody okay, nobody else <laughs> loves story time. So um, you cannot tell your story. No, I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. You guys don't have to type. Right. I'm not going to hold you to it. And JS says, I like the way you translated it. If provided good imagery, it provided oh, good you. imagery. Mm. So story time. Start with a question. What do you guys think about Da Hong Pao in terms of market? Like you can shoot up your thoughts. But in terms of market, you mean like um, 
so, like in terms of the heated, the heated, the popular nature of it, and how right. like we've all heard. I think you've probably heard that sometimes it auctions for millions of dollars mm. for those mother bush batches. And uh, mm. in two thousand two, there's twenty grams of Da Hong Pao auctioned for quarter million. So that's the price. Twenty of grams. Yes. Mm. And well, we also see Da Hong Pao all over the place, right? And vis-a-vis -vis what we talk about today. Mm. This Da Hong Pao in this book that we just talked about are mostly refers to the mother bush. Right, it talked about the mother bush a lot and the, the terroir. And right, more of the, the, the like the celebrity of uh, the tea kind of thing. But in real life, when we drink Da Hong Pao, it's. Uh, and we means all of us, like all of us, regular right. people who don't right. buy $2 million <laughs> for 20 gram tea. Uh, yeah, uh, so we don't have a chance to taste the mother bush. Da Hong Pao and everything. So, what exactly is Da Hong Pao? We're trying, we're drinking. Are you ever curious about that, or maybe mm -hmm. you already heard that uh, the Da Hong Pao we're drinking are not the Da Hong Pao Da Hong right. Pao? Are the mother bushes the only Da Hong Pao real bushes, or are there other bushes all over the place that are? The Story little... has it is not the only ones. And the Da Hong Pao, uh, the mother bush that we call as Da Hong Pao mother bush, has other cultivars in it. Mm. Kind of. There are three major ones with six bushes, like how they shoot out a different ones. You know, shoot from the underground. It oh. looks like different bushes. They are the same plant kind of thing. Okay. So it's a three and six keyword. It doesn't matter. So I just want to. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Mm, first, uh, for those of you who have been uh, drinking our uh, rock teas, uh, again, talk about our tea stories, stories about Gen Tea and behind, and our producers. I rarely talk about producers. I like people to focus and forget about all the stuff and just mm. taste because all the fancy things are at some point irrelevant. We like yeah. the tea, that's good. That's no right. matter what, right. who made it. It's a little know? bit window dressing at a certain point. Yeah, which, would, uh, but sometimes people love stories. So yeah, no, it's nothing wrong with it. Yes, but, but absolutely. At the end so of the day, right? Who is our uh, rock tea producers, especially like Tilo Han and those high end teas, is, is Mr. Wang Shun Ming. He was the one who, uh, from 1974 all the way till late 90s, the only one who take care of Mother Bush. He's the head of oh, wow. the study, uh, the institute in Wuyi. He grafted all those stuff, and he is the main drafter for Da Hong Pao National uh, Standard. Oh. So another huge guy in mm. Chinese tea, especially in rock tea. Definitely. The guy. In rock tea, right, and uh, uh, also in, in tea producing as well. Same with the tea science and everything. And we had a Beidou, a Beidou, Beidou at one point, which is considered a more I'm getting my bad habit. What have those bad pronunciation of uh, pinyin? Sometimes I'm, when I switch language, my mouth get crooked. <laughs> um, Beidou. So Beido, what does that mean? Descendant of a mother right, okay, bush right. is more of that. While according to nowadays the Da Hong Pao national definition, there are three Da Hong Pao. Three Da Hong Pao. Three kinds of Da Hong Pao. Okay. All can be named Da Hong Pao. They are not wrong, they're not lying, they're different. So right. first is the brand Da Hong Pao, which is by the the uh, we local government to have Okay. They have copyright, not copyright. Sort of like champagne that comes uh, from yeah, France, yes. champagne region. That's they really have right. the, mm. the grapes are grown in the right conditions, the, the process is correct, so they are allowed to boom, stamp that with the champagne official. Yes. Something like that? Yes. Or exactly like that? Yes. I guess it. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Then, second, you have Da Hong Pao, that is literally the mother tree Da Hong Pao, which doesn't really happen on. Right. You don't have that in the market. Yeah. It's absolutely not happening in the market. Right. Then you have the third one, which is called, in Chinese we call that Shangpin Da Hong Pao, maybe translated as a product Da Hong Pao or commercial Da Hong Pao kind of translation, which means this tea is uh, curated uh, to mimic 
the taste right. of da hong pao, okay. which means it's a blend right. or uh, stuff. So the purpose of that is for your tasting experience. They could mix uh, shui xian, they could mix anything, and different people right. would have different recipes in terms of how they blend it. Okay. So that's also da hong pao. Uh, and if for people like uh, tea Nazis or stuff, feel tea, like what tea what tea Nazis. Tea Nazis, Nazis? Yeah, tea so Nazis like or, or tea, tea nerds or whatever. Tea nerds, a little bit of like. It oh, kind of comes back to that. that? Kind of comes back to the culture difference too right? of the, um, what degree of precision are required. Right? Yes, it's, yeah. and, and it feels really annoying. Why you guys destroy something like that to make the market so chaotic and stuff? Mm. Uh, I don't want to say I'm justifying for them, but at a certain point, I understand what mm. they did. Similar with the Tie Guan Yin, we talk about and Da Hong Pao. So right, the first. Right success uh, of a tea that made a huge success national wise is Tie Guan Yin. Mm. And a lot of times when you're trying to introduce people a new concept, step one is simplify. That happens right. to everything and that's what they did initially. Same with the Tie Guan Yin, Anxi is the home for many cultivars. All times they was they, if they introduce uh, Tie uh, Guan Yin to people uh, or Anxi to people, they say we are from Anxi, we have famous tea like Tie uh, Guan uh, Yin, Mao Xie, uh, Mei Zhan, all those teas, then mm -hmm. people are like, what? Because they don't know, they don't even right. know tea, so it's just too much. And later on, they start to say Anxi Tie Guan Yin, right. simple. Pick one and run with it. Run with it. Right. Right, so they after their success, Da Hong Pao, we they're also recognize. Okay, if we say we have Da Hong Pao, we have Rou Gui, we have Shui Xian, we have Tie Luo Han, it's too much. Mm. People don't remember, so right. they started to. And they market. also don't know which one to. Well, which one should I get then? Yes, people mm. get confused, right. which is normal. If you tell me a bunch of wine or <sighs> your cheese, I was like. Okay. Right. It, what I was gonna say, it's like when people walk it's up to our same. table at the Toronto Tea Festival, and it's decision shock. We have yes, so many it's, jars. It's, it's the like, same ah. as the, you know, the the message center in the role of communication. You want to mm -hmm. simplify, mm -hmm. so people can get it. So uh, they consolidate anything that comes from Wei is Da Hong Pao. Ah, so, so there, they, was, they, there is this process until people really get know. Oh, we know Wei has Da Hong Pao. Ah. Then there's a little bit more advanced people start to dig in anything else. Right. You know they want to explore. Right. Then there's this trend of all those little cultivars. But all I'm saying is, first there's a confusion. Second, uh, I don't quite like it, but I understand their decision to uh, yeah, I see what you mean. help the tea farmers, help the local economy to. Right. You know, grow. Yeah, to flourish, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, um, when you were talking about how they're, they're, a, they're, some, they're sometimes a blend, it remind me of, uh, we've spent some time also talking about uh, fake shu and fake shen mm -hmm. And even, um, like, because one of, the, and even before there was even a buzz about quote unquote shu puar was so important to even bother faking, they were already blending those too. Mm -hmm. In the pursuit of great cup of tea, yes. the shen is too harsh, the shu is too mellow. Yeah. Mix that up a bit and make a great sip. Yes, I mean that really is what. I, so, it, so that, and it mm. really goes back to like a decade or two ago when people were t making tea. They are focusing on making the taste better, improving mm. the mm. taste. They do a lot of things that nowadays we might not agree. Why are you doing this? Mm. I feel like oh, why you blend shen and shu? Because the shen was undrinkable. Yeah. Right. There Which has a, changed. Well, in nowadays times, we're yeah. more, mm. <laughs> certain times, more focused on the title, the irrelevant mm. things. Right, actually. right. Yeah. When at the end of the day, it's going in your mouth and you're mm. looking for a good taste. Let's check out. Lots of people commented, mm. so let's see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I heard there are lots of Dahong Pao imposters. Oh, right at the beginning. Love story time. Mm. Love the way you put good imagery. Yeah. So, Cindy, I heard there are lots of DHP imposters out there, Dahong Pao imposters. Mm. I wouldn't, I bet a lot of them are not as imposters if now you heard that the three grades, they are mm. Da Hong Pao. But if you see Da Hong Pao on the market, mark as Da Hong Pao, they're bland. Same with our Da mm. Hong Pao, all, uh, uh, the Asia Da Hong Pao mm -hmm. and stuff. Those are blends. But the quality is there is it's what supreme. I care. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yes. Supreme quality. And that's something you got to. Um, and it doesn't mean that praise. because it's bland, it's bad. Like, mm. uh, like I always say, in almost every video and everything. Tea's quality depends on the taste, and mm. not 
any titles, bland, pure, whatever. Right. You know? Yeah, we, again, it's kind of interesting because I feel like we, Rock Tea, has that same heat and quality pursuit like uh, like Puar kind of got, and it has that same... Yeah, there's, there's, there's that same there's a, that case where people want the number to, to be really old. They don't really care about yes. is it tasting good yes. or is it rotten or yeah. And yeah. same with mm. the same with the the, the heat the, on micro right, tawar. Right, oh, exactly. this is uh, from whatever. This is Ru Gui from uh, which Kung or which, Kung. This is mm, from mm. Uh, Tian Xinyan. This is from doesn't matter really. In the end, the price and the taste has to match. I don't like to pay extra bucks just because of the tax. Right. Right. So, um, only tasted once, yes. I heard about the, the auction. expensive auction, right? right? right. And uh, yes, I heard of what we drink isn't the real deal, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, kind of is, kind of, of course. I, I don't think anybody can expect to drink the quote unquote real deal. Mm. Ain't gonna, I mean, hopefully someday in my life, but I'm not gonna hold my breath, that's for yeah. sure. I'll turn bright purple. JS, is there a here's <laughs> a question? Bright purple. When you know when you hold your breath, you turn purple. Oh. It's actually more like black purple, deep purple. <laughs> JS says, "Is there a reason why the Hung Pao is still called that if it doesn't come from the mother bush?" I think we you've kind, kind of, of answered that. Answer that. So let I us hope. know if you need more expansion, JS. But I think she kind of covered that. Or am I misunderstanding? And our the Hung Pao comes from offshoots. No, um, offshoots are like the uh, the the direct one crafted, not a few right. offshoots. Right. Offshoots, Beidou. Beidou, we, we have Beidou. We have that Beidou. Mm. Uh, it's really currently good. sold out. Really good. Um, uh, yes, and expensive. Yes. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it's yeah. just the way it goes, right? Uh, Qidan is another one, and uh, Qidan. Qidan. Or Qidan. It's yeah, one of those three, or one of those six. Three. Three. There are three, and mm. uh, Qie Shu, I think, uh, where somebody also call. There, anyway, there are many discussions on the other cultivars, but the Beidou and Qidan is pretty firm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe we'll cover that and in a future video. And come from uh, Mr. Wang Shunming. He mm. was the one who grafted, so. Right. Yeah, he was like 20 years of ex uh, exclusive access to the mother bush. He wow. knows that so well. His house, uh, which is a, a garden-ish place, he has a field of uh, so a tea plants, and uh, every row is a different cultivar, a different rock tea cultivar. Uh -huh. You can go there and you can see the color difference of different cultivars. You can see their leaf difference. Oh boy! Every row. Next and tea trip. He has cranes there. He. In real ones. Yeah. I know that's yeah. a okay. Next tea trip, <laughs> I want to visit this guy. This is going to be. I and he is very. I cool. love these. These tea guys have these gorgeous gardens. Like they're the house. He is the guy in rock tea, though. Right, of course, of course. But Mr. I was going to tell them about Mr. Su from the guy, the fellow who invented and makes su gong cha, the jasmine green. But he had a gorgeous uh, garden. It wasn't we a tea garden. We all have gardens. Once you yes, know. but with water and fish, water, and just fish, really beautiful. Yes. He's also an artist in uh, mm. paintings and calligraphies. Remember his uh, mm. works and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and uh, on the wall. Yeah, he, he showed us. It was mm. just beautiful. So, Cindy, um, can I ask a question back to Tae Guan Yin? Yeah. Oh, wait, hang on. I missed oh, a couple. JS said agreed to Cindy. Oh, I would I really love some, some lessons on Chinese tea, tea terms. Ah, cool. In the, we asked if you want mm. that. We said shout out. So Cindy's saying, yeah, I've learned about 20 or 30 key terms, but I know there are other key terms I should know. And JS says agreed. Mm. Fernanda agreed, okay. but slowly. Oh, I think maybe. And I'm, if I'm talking too fast, just let me know. I'll try and slow down. Or maybe mm. you were talking too fast. No, it was definitely me. I'm so tough because I, I, I gotta think, right? Cindy says, uh, can I ask a question back to Taeguan Yin? Before the classic, the only Taeguan Yin I had is the rolled green, quite different. And what what is the common oh, denominator? Is it the cultivar? What's a denominator? What is the denominator? Uh, on a fraction, the top, it's the bottom. The thing underneath that makes them the same. Numerator. What denominator. is the common? It's a, it's an expression that means what is it that it, they have, what is the thing they have in common? Oh, oh mm. okay, okay. I, I shouldn't have been okay. so mathy. What a nerdy answer. <laughs> so it's like, the thing what? That, okay. Thing that makes them in common. Right. Let me just so, uh, finish reading that, and I will look back to that. Sure. Now I understand the bland imposter difference. I wrote the uh, previous comment before you explained it. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. And no worries. I'm glad I kind of explained that. Um, 
And that would be so cool to say, wow, I want to see that tea garden. And JS yeah. said you explained it really well. Yeah, 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 thank you. Thanks, JS. Yeah, I might have a picture of his garden. I don't know. Mm. Anyways, uh, back to your question, which is gold. And I meant to talk, I forgot. <laughs> so thank you, Cindy. Yeah, thank you, Cindy. Uh, so what is a classic? In terms of a cultivar, there's no difference. Tie Guan Yin is mm. a cultivar itself. Uh, the difference, there are, let me say, big category, three kind of uh, Tie Guan Yin in the market. Mm. The green Tie Guan Yin, which the dry leaf looks green. Check and out that Chao Ren article. Yes. And the second one is the roasted Tie Guan Yin in the market. Mm -hmm. And the third, uh, which is the, leaf, uh, the dry leaves are darker which mm -hmm. has roasted flavor. Mm -hmm. And the third one, which we call classic, uh, meaning is authentic, old, traditionally made. Mm -hmm. So in terms of a cultivar, they are all Tieguanyin cultivar. Mm -hmm. In terms of process, that's where the difference comes from. Mm -hmm. The green one is the newer process that's uh, happening uh, more popular and get really popular national-wise or even worldwide. Uh, in the late 90s till the 2000s. And then the roasted one, which sometimes people would think, oh, that's the traditional one. Eh, that's not. Because most... <laughs> good sound effect. I'm not used to that. I got infected by you. That's good. <laughs> oh, I was like, ooh, the buzzer. Uh, so 90s, the roasted not one, that one. Yeah, yeah, the roasted one, some people would even market that as traditional one, blah, blah, mm -hmm. only because it's roasted. Oh, That's great, not right. Great point. Because the, the, nowadays, how they do the roasted one, 99 out of 99, I want to say 100, but that, no, 100 out of 100 mm -hmm. is uh, they roast it after they did the green one, they add a step roast it, sell that as traditional, right. or old style right. or stuff. That's not right. The fundamental difference between cl uh, classics or traditional styles or stuff and stuff vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the new style, Tie Guan Yin, it's not the shape or roasted or not. It's the oxidation level. Mm. All those, like I talk about three different Tie Guan Yin, right? The first two, the green one and the roasted ones, they are all very lightly oxidized. And in terms of the shaking and rolling, it's really light. Mm -hmm. And in terms of a mouthfeel and depth, it, they can never compare with the uh, classic one. Right. However, it's very appealing to people who just get Blooming into aroma. tea mm -hmm. or get it from green tea to oolong. Mm -hmm. Those are lighter in taste very uh, romantic mm -hmm. and stuff. It's very easy to accept, but for the more advanced tasters, it's a little bit thinner in mouthfeel. And so um, mm -hmm. those are the key difference is the oxidation rather than shape or a lot of misunderstanding around roast. Yes, so mm -hmm. thanks, that was awesome. That's I'll, really I'll, good I'm question. even gonna thank you on behalf of Cindy. That was, uh, I know you've mentioned that before and I should know that, but I always forget about that little hint about the oxidation level is deeper, mm. which actually give that thick, delicious mouthfeel. It's not just the roasting. Mm. And good one about the, uh, the, a lot of the quote unquote traditional ones simply being roasted green Taiguan Yin, which is fundamentally different, right? Yeah. So hopefully that was, uh, that, uh, that, hopefully that answered your question. I think it was great. Um, and Fernanda confirmed that yes, uh, she just, it's not my speed of talk, it's the uh, speed we should just learn it, take it easy, don't overwhelm. I right. think that's what they meant. So Layla Stackleather says, I've had Beidou Yi Hao, mm -hmm. uh, a blend of Di Chan and Beidou si and da. others. Beidou and others. Both were delicious. Yes, I bet they mm. were. Dark fudge brownie aroma. Mm. Mm, yeah, nice. a little bit burnt brownie, I bet. But not burnt, you know what I mean? Like just at the edge. Cindy says, thank you. Thanks for explaining the Taiguanian oxidation level difference. I've been confused about that. Mm. There you go. All right, guys, I'm Ooh. gonna, gonna check, my, uh, check my little thing and see what I've got going on. So again, I think I heard a bunch of people join up on the Discord. I'm not sure what happened over there. We heard the beeps. I hope they weren't too distracting for you guys. I think they weren't. So um, I might pop on later and just jump into the music and tea lounge and Discord and throw on some tunes. You guys can throw on some tunes. I'll try and get some instructions up. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about Discord so much. This was Sunday Tea Book. We covered today 
No, Happy I'm pretty Labels. excited yes. to, uh, to, to connect with you guys. Um, you know, this is pretty formal. It's mm -hmm. not super formal by any stretch, <laughs> but it's pretty fun. We're, we're doing some educational stuff, some, not some, it's pretty intense, not intense in the terms of hard, but just really fun, deep. I don't think you can get this stuff. You cannot get this stuff anywhere else. I'll just come out and say it, okay? Uh, this level of knowledge is pretty awesome. Um, we love sharing it with you, uh, we, but I'm looking mm. forward to just hanging out and sipping tea. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, I hope I, this, today's topic is quite interesting and I, I answer some of your questions. Never oh, yeah. hesitate to ask your questions yes. during the live or comment below. I yes. always try to answer and uh, if I don't explain that really well, don't hesitate to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ask me to clarify because sometimes I will overlook certain stuff. Okay. Yeah, of course. And I try to, I try to catch her too and kind mm. of poke and say, Hey, could you say that again? Or can, what did that mean? Mm. But sometimes I already know, or sometimes I'm just not paying attention because I'm spaced out or something. <laughs> not usually though. Not usually. Um, anyway, our, our December schedule is up on the website. Yeah, check it out. We'll, Tons of good teasers. I'll, so I'll, I'll pop the link down below because I'm not yes. sure if it's, if it's linkable elsewhere. Right. So I'll put that link down below. Uh, we've got tons of great teas, re some really, really fancy teas coming yeah, up I'm after really Christmas. Excited. It's totally spoiling. We're going to spoil ourselves. We hope you spoil yourselves. Um, check out our latest video about exactly that and other things about festive teas, teas to enjoy over the holidays. That just went up yesterday, I think, yeah. maybe the before. Um, anything else coming up? That's about it. Some cool, we've got some, um, and, and also this, what's that series called? Try this. And then also, oh this. yeah, we also have a series that started last month Couple and months ago. No? last month. There's two. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we continue on. If you drink tea for something, uh, yeah, this month we talk about the sleep and weight loss. And the funny thing about talking about weight loss is we also talk about the weight gain. You know, those guys that were mm. really skinny and kind of same one gain some weight and those are the same episode. So it's an episode that we would love to hear your tips on this certain topics while we share our TCM approach and just hang out, drink tea, have fun, you know, uh, indoor Christmas time. Yep. Hope everybody have some fun. Yep. They're not formal presentations. They're light and fluffy, but it's if you drink tea for this thing, try this as well. Mm. That's sort of the spirit and, and weight yes. loss is coming and up. Fancy right? teas. Yeah. Fancy. And fancy teas, oh. lots of fancy teas. All right, guys, so that wraps up this week's episode of Sunday Tea Book. <laughs> I think we're cruising all the way through December too. I don't think we need to break because yeah, just yeah, the yeah. way the holidays fell, we're going to mm -hmm. keep cruising right through December, keeping Every us Sunday going. Afternoon. You've got the whole schedule up too, all the way to the end. So that's exciting. If you check out our live section on the channel, you'll see when that's done. Thanks for joining us and uh, yes. until next time. Very fun. Have a nice weekend, guys. Keep, keep steeping. steeping.